work for days with a tool review. I have a skill saw, model 3316 compound miter saw. Um, I use this just around the house. I do things uh, cutting trim. I'll use it as uh, if I need to cut, you know, a two by four, cut boards. Um, it's limited on its width and how deep it can cut. But if you just need one or two straight cuts, uh, it's, it's quite effective at that. It has a uh, 15 amp motor on it, a 5 8 inch arbor and a 10 inch blade. And that motor turns at a max of 5,000 RPMs with no load on it. Um, it has both miter adjustment and bevel adjustment to the blade in a uh, max of 47 degrees uh, in both cases. And the miter is 47 degrees left and 47 degrees right. And on the bevel, it's 47 degrees that direction to the right. Um, it does have, although I don't have it in place now, a clamp to hold your work piece in place. Uh, I find it easiest and quickest most of the time for the work I do to simply hold the board or the trim or whatever I'm cutting in place and then go right ahead and cut it. Um, that may not be the safest as a disclaimer, but if you keep your hands well away from the blade, you should not have an issue. It does have this safety guard, which as you can see, the saw is stowed down right now. The safety guard uh, does come all the way down to the uh, work platform. There's a knob on the back. If you simply push down a little bit on the handle, pull that knob out, the blade comes up, the safety guard goes down, and there's maybe an inch in the very back of the blade where you could get cut. I'm not putting my hands in there because this is plugged in. It has uh, two safety buttons on top. One of these must be depressed for the trigger to pull. I'll demonstrate that. It won't pull. And that's all it takes is a little thumb pressure or palm pressure. So if you're left or right-handed, it should still be fine for you. It does have a dust collection bag on the back, which collects a surprising amount of dust. However, it will still make a mess. As I said, most of the work on that I use the saw for are home projects. I'm usually working in or near the room that I'm doing um, my remodeling. So that's not a very big deal because I still have to clean up. However, uh, as in shooting this video tonight, I will have to clean up the area that I'm working. This is not an active works on this is a room we have already remodeled. With that, I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer, show the miter and bevel adjustments, um, how those detents work with this uh, little detent button and the, the locking knob, and cut a piece of trim, show those angles that it leaves. This feature would be great if you're cutting um, crown molding, complex crown molding, that kind of thing. I haven't gotten that far yet. So we'll set that back to zero, hold it upright, keeping my hands always off of the, um, the safety switch, the trigger, however you want to call it. So that's the basics of this saw. Like I said, there's a clamp that would go either here or here that I do not have in place. It does have um, a bit of a ruler back here, up to nine inches on this end, and that's starting at one inch right there. So that would be one inch from the center line of the blade, if that's set at zero degrees. So I'll demonstrate a quick cut, um, just to show the angle that this ends up putting out when you're all done. So this is gonna be a very basic 90 degree piece of trim. So I'm gonna set this at 45, turn my locking knob down, which you do want to do. If you don't, it does end up a little bit off. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make one cut right in the middle of this. So that was a pretty clean cut. This is a relatively cheap trim. It's the kind of compressed cardboard uh, stuff that you could cut with a utility knife. And I tried when I first started doing trimming, it was a big pain. Uh, we don't do that anymore. That's why I got this saw. So I could more effectively trim our home. So now if I want to cut the other half of that 90, I could either loosen this knob up, which is the way I'm gonna go, or you could just flip the trim around. So I was cutting with the wide edge of the trim up against the fence back here. Uh, in that case, if I wanted to keep this at the 45, I could just turn my piece around, cut it with the narrow edge of the trim up against that fence, and that would give me my other angle. As I said, we'll swing this through to the other 45 degree mark, tighten the knob. In this case, I'm going to cut more on this end. 
One thing I do wish I had gotten was the laser version of this saw. As you can see, if I have an actual mark that I want to cut on, I've got to keep my hands clear. I've got to bring this down on my line, wherever that is. I didn't mark this piece, but wherever that may be, um, and make sure that that blade and the curve of the blade is going to leave the proper amount of, uh, of trim. So we'll go ahead and cut this, keeping my left hand a ways back. I'm still pressing into the fence, but I'm nowhere near the blade. So these two cuts, since we're done with this for a moment, I'm just going to push this down. And with those two cuts, we have not a perfect joint, but for your general homeowner and bearing this table is not anywhere near level, um, a fairly good joint on that piece of trim. I like this saw, it does very well for my purposes. Um, and again, it's the Skill Saw Model 3316 with the factory blade on it. I have not replaced this and I've cut several rooms worth of trim, uh, as well as two by four boards, um, bits of scrap, that kind of thing. Um, it's available, or was, uh, at the time of this video. Uh, Home Depot has it for $140. Uh, I don't know the cost of the laser upgrade version I mentioned, but I would definitely recommend if you're going to be doing a lot of this work. It's the one thing I wish I had, just to help me get an, an idea of where that blade was going, to, uh, was going to land when I actually did my cut. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. Follow me over at Instagram at TQ4Days. Um, I post videos here, obviously photos over there, and I try to link the two and say, I do intend on doing a few more of these tool reviews and releasing them, especially during the holiday season. Uh, as I said, any questions at all, please do ask. Stay tuned for more, and uh, I'll see you back shortly.